So I want to go back to something you said earlier in the interview. You made a comment and you said that you talked to Tupac a few weeks before the whole Quad Studio situation. So talk to me about that whole Quad Studio thing. How did you feel and what was your reaction when you heard Tupac got shot and robbed at Quad Studios? I was devastated because I didn't know. I heard he was shot in the head. I didn't know what was going on. Um, it was crazy because, like, maybe two weeks before that, me and him had had a falling out. So we weren't speaking. And, you know, I was, I was scared. I was shaken up. You know, when I heard the news in the morning time, because I didn't hear it the same night it happened, I, I got up, rushed over to Bellevue Hospital, but he had already checked himself out by the time I got there, you know. What did you and Tupac fall out about, if you don't mind me asking? Um, well, we fell out because he was at the club. I didn't know he was there. I didn't know he was coming, and... He was there, and I jumped off somebody's motorcycle right in front of him, and it looked crazy, but really I wasn't doing anything. It was a friend of a friend from my neighborhood that asked me if I wanted to go for a ride, and I was like, yeah, fuck it. But, you know, it, it looked crazy to him. He was with his people, and, you know, he just he didn't appreciate that. And me being young at the time, I didn't know how to, like, talk and express myself to explain, like, yo, that's the homie. Like, I'm not, you know doing anything so you know I walked off on him he said something to me that pissed me off and I walked off on him and we didn't speak for like two weeks and then he got shot up so you know I ran off to the hospital like no matter what's going on I'm still here for you and I love you I care so I was there but I got there too late so you heard about the quad studio shooting a day later you went to the hospital to try to see Tupac, but once you got there, Tupac wasn't there. If I'm not mistaken, Tupac went to Jasmine Guy House, right? Right after he left the hospital. Well, he told me that he went to stay at her, with her, you know, he trusted her, and um, he went to stay with her. He felt he would be safe there, you know, and not many people knew where he was. And I think, you know, they had a very special relationship at some point. Because Pac, you know, didn't trust many people. So, if he went there, you know, he definitely trusted her. And I, um, we didn't speak too much on that. I, I mean, I knew where she lived at, where he was at, and all that. After the fact, but that's where he was. For a short spell. So, I want to go back to something you just said. You said Tupac and Jasmine Guy had a special relationship at some point. So, Tupac and Jasmine Guy was more than friends, or was they just friends? Oh, they wasn't just friends. I mean, he he, did, he dealt with her at a certain point. So, they definitely was missing around, right? Yeah. And one thing about him, at least I could say, I don't know how other females, but he was very honest with me. He didn't lie to me about anything. So, anything he told me, I know it to be facts, because he, he never, even if it hurt my feelings or not, he always kept it 100. So Tupac told you directly that him and Jasmine Guy was more than friends? Yeah. Did you ever meet Jasmine Guy? I did meet her. I met her in his apartment that he had on Wilshire Boulevard the day after he passed away. She came to the apartment. I was there with his mother. And um, she bought us food from Roscoe's. And I met her, and she was she was uh, she was really cool, you know. Um, held no funniness towards her, and she was she was nice. I liked her. She was real. I could see why he liked her so much and why he trusted her. So when Tupac did go to prison, how did you and Tupac get back in contact? Did you reach out to him, or he reached out to you? Well, I ended up getting in contact with him. Um, you know, I didn't get in contact with him. I just wanted to be, make sure he was all right. But what prompted me to do that was that I bumped into Stretch in the club one night. And he was like, oh, Dad, what's up? Because I knew him. You know, I met him from day one when I met Pac. He was there. And, you know, I would always see him. You know, I knew a, a bunch of Pac's people. They knew me very well because I was always with him. Now, 
he tells me that uh, Pac, he sure Pac would love to know that he ran into me because we lost contact and he had no way of getting in contact with me. I said, okay. So I gave him my phone number. I told him, call me. He called me, told me he had a message for me from Pac, you know. So I said, come through. I'm living in Brooklyn and Best at the time. I'm like, come through. This man shows up to my house with some dudes from Junior Mafia and some dudes from Bedford Avenue. And I'm just like, okay, because from what I'm getting, I haven't spoke to Pac, but, you know, the radio interviews and what's going on, the, the atmosphere is that there's a problem between Big and Pac, that Pac feels like, you know, Big has something to do with him getting shot and that thing. So I'm not really knowing what's going on here at this point, but that already looked fishy to me. Then Stretch comes under the pretense that he got a message for me from Pac. There's no message, though. It's just him trying to holler at me, you know, and that was the second flag. So, you know, after I spoke to him for a little while, I shut him down, told him that wasn't going to happen. You know, that prompted me to contact Pac because I'm like, this your boy. What's he doing with your enemies, people? And why is he trying to holler at me? And you locked up in jail, and he, you know? So I, I wrote him a letter. I wrote him a letter, you know, to see how he was doing. I told him I meant no disrespect to his marriage and whatever. You know, but I just wanted to see how he was doing. I missed him, and I wanted to know I cared about him. And, you know, even though whatever happened between us, you know, I'm still here. And I also wanted to let him know what's trusted, because I, I'm like, if that's your friend, a certain movement shouldn't be going on. So that's how we ended up getting in contact. Did you tell Tupac that Big Stretch tried to get at you? Um, he, was, he was upset about it. He was upset about it. I think he had ideas that Stretch wasn't, you know, really down for him as he thought he was. You know, and he told me he was going to, you know, put, put some questions out there to figure out a couple things. And see what's really going on. How long was Tupac in prison when Big Scratch tried to get at you? Oh, I don't think that long. I think he was still in Rikers Island at that point. So I, I couldn't tell you the days. <laughs> but he wasn't upstate yet. So it would have to be definitely within, you know, the first month. I don't even know. I think he, what was he in Rikers Island maybe for two, three weeks? This was like right after he got married. Like all, maybe he felt like the nigga got married and, you know, I don't know what he was thinking. So Tupac get robbed and shot at Quad Studios. A few days later, he gets arrested for the whole Ayanna Jackson situation. And once he goes to prison, Big Stretch tries to talk to you. He didn't waste no time trying to get at you. Right. Under the pretenses that he had a message for me from him, you know, he came over there and, and yeah, he, tried to, he tried to shoot a shot. The whole situation made me very uncomfortable. Because like I said, he's with big people. I know Pac is blatant big in his mind for what happened at the quad and you know now you hanging out with these people but all the time I've known and I knew Stretch because I met Stretch the same night I met Pac I met him and I would always see him he was always around every time I would come through and hang out with them go out you know to clubs things like that he was always there like he knew me that's why I was just like wow that's that's what you think I would do how close was you and Bitch Scratch how was Bitch Scratch as a person he was cool. He was cool. You know, I won't say I bonded with him like I did with other members of Fox people, but, you know, he was cool. Nothing, nothing, nothing that stands out about him, you know, so much that I could say, oh, he was this or that. Like, he was regular. I don't know. I think that whole incident just left a bad taste in my mouth, too. But... He was all right. He was cool. He was a regular dude. Like I said, it wasn't nothing, nothing fantastic that I could say. And I wasn't paying him as much attention as I was paying Pac anyways. 